All we care about at this point is providing you the best water service and water quality at the lowest reasonable cost, doing it in an environmentally conscious way for the region. Also, we just learned about this issue um, when it appeared in the Seacoast online, which was just a few days ago, frankly. And um, I've been out of town at a conference, coincidentally a conference on the global food crisis and water shortage in the world. So that's kind of water. It's essential to life. It is a need. It is not a want. It is not something that should be commodified. And as we all know, the water bottling industry, their marketers have done this incredible job of convincing us that we need to buy bottled water. Now in this area, thanks to Norm, we have like the best water probably in the whole country. It's just, it's so tasty. And uh, you know, it, it's something that uh, we could just fill up our bottles and take it with us, our thermoses. We don't have to buy bottled water. I have a well. I'm not on the water district. I found out about this in the newspaper. And I'm a resident of Kennebunk and I pay taxes and I'm a little bit upset that no one took the time to let me know that there was going to be a Poland Spring distribution plant out where I live. I don't have a deep well. If the water table goes down, I'm out of water. Is Poland Spring going to build me a new well or is the Kennebunk going to put a new well in? This water has to be bottled for 109, I hear, as the primary aquifer, and it's going to be taken somewhere. And I'm guessing, unless they build another plant, which they haven't announced down here yet, there's going to be hulls, which means they've got to go from here to there. So far, in Saco alone, we do not get involved in the Hollis issue. It was their, their thing. So, you know, as the company would say, 800 good, clean jobs and so forth. Our Route 112 has had to be repaved and widened. Our intersection to the Saco Industrial Park entrance to the main turnpike has had to be redone. 40, um, approximately 40 tractor trailers a day come through full, have to turn around, and at the end of the day, after they do their runs, come back empty. So it is more than just an issue for this one water district. It is a regional issue here for all of Southern Maine. And I don't believe that this, that this sale of water is really going to reduce my benefits. How did you establish the fair market value of a gallon of water? <laughs> and uh, what I'm asking is, couldn't we ask for more money for our water? I recognize that these people are trying to save you from making a terrible mistake. <laughs> a couple of examples that I've done very recently that apply to what you're doing here. One is that I, I uh, put Nestle on the internet and see what came up. <laughs> and uh, inter interesting enough, here's a lawsuit in the Michigan Supreme Court, won by Nestle, that had to do with changing the local laws regarding the treatment of water. This is the danger you're running against here. I don't care how many lawyers you have. You are not going to be a corporation this big. You are not going to be. <laughs> Furthermore, if it's somebody's well that's dried up, do you really think they're going to do something about it? I don't. I make bet. Uh, I make a bet. They are not going to do anything about it. And, and don't kid yourself. I mean, this is a huge company and very profitable, and in Switzerland. So contracts don't mean much. Lawyers have different opinions as to what those contracts mean, what those contracts mean. And when you do get in bed with a large company that has money and political and legal influence, you're getting into a situation which I don't think we realize what we're getting into. Here, I don't know about anyone else, but I certainly would pay uh, a lot more than that to keep um, a corporation out of this town. Uh, it would be six-tenths of a cent if the contract is.
Yeah, if our rates as proposed go through, yeah. Should you enter into a contract with an international corporation when international corporations are working hard to control all the water in the world? Do you want to ethically be part of that global move? Do you want to do that? And the second is, do you want to, when Kennebunk is a cool city, enter into a contract with a company that will increase the carbon into the air with their trucks and with their bottles? Do you want to ethically contract with somebody who will be doing those things? It is on its decision to get in bed with the Nestle Corporation. The, uh, this corporation, uh, against strenuous uh, pediatric advice, and pressure uh, waged a cynical and disastrous campaign in sub-Saharan Africa many, many years ago to sell the population on the notion of bottle feeding instead of breastfeeding. Uh, and I don't think, uh, judging from what Jim Hawkins has dug out, that the corporate uh, conscience has changed very much. And I, I think everybody should be aware of what happens when small communities begin to make contracts with very, very large international corporations. I want to tell you that I don't believe Poland Spring is a trustworthy corporation. We um, were very worried about what was happening in Freiburg, and a group up there had a truck watch on how much, how many trucks went through and picked up water in a day, and we did it for two or three days, if I remember correctly, and they took the average, and Poland Spring was taking out more than twice as much as they had said they would take out. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, would the board consider uh, putting a clause in the contract uh, to make sure for the people in this room who voted against this that no past, current, or future employee of the Water District could ever go to work for the Nestle Corporation? Now, we're going to send water and this international company, we're going to get in on that. NAFTA, WTO, all this, and we're going to hang ourselves. We're the smartest thing we do, forget it, about it. Ran a cookie, a bake sale, if you need money. <laughs> I will just get a couple statistics from the September 7, 2007 briefing in the week, where it says it takes 1.5 million barrels of crude oil to create the plastic in just one year's worth of water bottles. Then there's the matter of getting water from Fiji, France, and Maine, and so forth. And later, to, dis to distribute bottled water that's hauled to and fro within the U.S. every week requires the equivalent of 37,800 18-wheel trucks. Now, I have to say that I think the Water District serves us pretty well. They have the best uh, newsletter. I look forward to that newsletter whenever it comes. Uh, we learned last time that I think it's the blue hydrant pumps the most, right? Well, I don't know that. That's a really good thing. But I do have a question, and it's, isn't there some, you said a number of times that the responsibility, you feel your major responsibility is to serve your customers. But I would ask, isn't there some moral responsibility beyond that for the trustees to look out into the distance with some sensitivity to these numbers. I think uh, some of our frustration here might be that we thought this would be more democratic. Mm -hmm. There is democracy here, but it's representative democracy, and you know, pretty sure it was January of 05. Um, I took an economic development tour and went through the Poland Spring plant in Poland. And um, there were probably a dozen of us. And uh, I diverted from the group, as I often do, and went over and looked at a map on one of the executive's walls, and it happened to be water sources, potential water sources in the state of Maine. And I noticed in this part of your county was a rather large designation of where they could get some water. And um, I inquired about the possibility of this being tapped in the future. And the response at the time was, you know, that's near a population center, near Route 1. We're afraid that might uh, tarnish the image of Poland Spring. We're not interested in going down there uh, right now. Um, that could have been uh, disingenuous. It might, it might be that profit motive has caused a reevaluation re of, uh, of where they are. But I found that to be uh, you know, rather interesting, given that, that current situation.
And I would like to ask all of you also to consider ethical issues. If we mean it, you have had your last bottle of water. <laughs> Uh, I also want to disclose something. I don't know how many of you here know about Nestle's greenwashing that they do in every community where Nestle goes. Their lawyer happens to be the same lawyer as the Nature Conservancy, Mike Aaron. Now, gee, what a coincidence that we are getting some, uh, uh, some land, conservancy land, everywhere. Nestle goes that they work out a deal to placate the environmentalists. Everybody's happy, gee, we're getting some, some of this, this great land, but, uh, uh, you know, strings attached. Uh, 